Hey, welcome again to Cloud and Sec, a channel about cloud and cybersecurity technologies. In this video, I want to talk about breach attack simulations and a way to automate these operations in a large enterprise. First, let's quickly touch on breach attack simulations and why this is a subject very important to the improvement of processes in large organizations or in a cybersecurity operations. It all comes down to understanding and assessing your posture against common attacks by adversaries. This is fundamental when we think of large organizations who have a mature cybersecurity operation who are already leveraging and relying on adversary attack information and knowledge bases such as MITRE ATT&CK framework, for example. MITRE ATT&CK is a framework that is widely adopted by organizations and also by vendors as a way to assess and understand what kind of techniques, tactics, and even procedures are being found and seen on an environment. When we try to automate and when we try to scale operations from that perspective, utilizing these known um, adversary operations, that's where breach attack simulation tools come in place. Now, there are a range of breach attack simulation solutions out there in the market. There are a number that are sold to service providers or even large organizations who have the mature um, cybersecurity team to actually run and deploy these in their environments and, of course, do the proper handling of those tools. There is also open source tools, such as MITRE's own Caldera. So MITRE, the same provider of the MITRE ATT&CK framework, is also providing a tool called MITRE Caldera to utilize this scalable and automated way to perform breach attack simulations utilizing their own framework. And this tool is open source, it's available on the GitHub, it can run on Docker containers, and it can be deployed to Linux, Mac OS, and of course, Windows machines. And it works in a way that is seamless for operators and managers or whoever is performing their operations, their, their test operations. Let's take a look at how it works. Okay, before I dive into the dashboards and to talk about the solution itself, let me quickly go over what I'm trying to do here. I'm simulating an attack. This is my environment, my test environment. And why I'm doing this is because as a security analyst, as, as someone who has to prove the value of solutions, I often need to know how it works versus adversary attacks. That is where I would like to be able to perform specific attacks against my platform. So I set up this test environment in a cloud environment where I actually have different devices, simulating user, different user accounts. One of these user accounts and devices has Caldera set up in it, and it's acting as the hub for the breach attack simulation platform. And from this device, I can then deploy the agent to the different devices in my network. Of course, creating the proper rules from a security perspective to allow the creation of that agent not to curb um, my tests right off the bat, but this is essentially what I'm doing. And I'm gonna cover how I've done so and what results I got. Okay, and so what am I using for this test environment for this entire platform? It's essentially MITRE Caldera. MITRE Caldera is an open, to open source tool. It's available under caldera.mitre.org you can get access to it and just get started right from here, right? So essentially, you can scroll down, you can read through all the main capabilities of the platform, essentially improving your processes through different lenses, be that manual red team engagements or even blue team engagements where you're assessing this posture of your environment like the example that I've just gave and which I'm using as, yes, right? As a blue operator, blue team operator, where I'm trying to understand how I'm faring against different adversaries. Cool. Now, what can I do and how can I get started? Essentially, just go through the get started uh, document. 
it'll explain to you how you can run this Python scripts in your uh, machine, in your test machine or whatever machine you are using as the hub. How this is going to work is you're going to install Caldera, this framework. It's a web server that's going to run on your command and control server or command and control machine. From that device, what you're going to do is then manage the entire automated operations from there. And you're going to create essentially um, the agents that you're going to deploy to um, your victims. Naturally, these agents will point back to your own device, to this machine running Caldera, and it's going to report back to the server. Um, and it's going to, these scripts or these agents, they're going to simulate a different or a data aggregator by some kind of vendor. And this is how you'll get data from victims back to your command and control, if you will. Cool. That's the gist of it. Now, I'm going to jump into my virtual machine. Okay, so this here is my virtual machine, one of those users simulating an infected user perhaps, or just simulating one machine with Caldera in this environment. Now this particular device has Docker installed. That's how I deployed Caldera essentially. And the ease of using, or the benefit of using Docker is just the ease of use really. Because whenever I just turn on my my device, I can just open up Docker and start my web application, which is Caldera. Now, let's just wait for it to start and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, this is the default login page for Caldera. As you can see, it's just running on my local host, default port 88. Now, what I'm going to do is just log in with the default credentials or whatever credentials you set up. You can change that as you will. I'm logging in as red team operator as you can see here now there are different profiles there's a red team and there's a blue team login uh, you, can, you can differentiate how you're leveraging the platform this way i'm not going to get into the details of what they mean but just know that now what i really want to point out is the menu on the left hand side this tool is really as you can see complete and has a lot of different layers to it but really, for you to get started, you just have to understand the MITRE ATT&CK framework for one, and then just deploy an agent. When you do that, you can get started performing all the actions you need. Now, when you click on deploy an agent, that's the first step into getting started. What you're going to do is see different agents that you can deploy to your environment. There are a few difference, differences in how they communicate back to this command and control server. Now, I will use SendCat because it's one that I know for sure that works on different platforms. If I choose Ragdoll, for example, via HTML, it doesn't work on Windows, for example. And as you can see, pretty easy to use, easy to really understand what it's trying to do. There are nuances, of course, on how that differentiates on your network traffic as well. So understanding the differences, especially from a uh, blue team perspective in your own environment is really core depending on what you're trying to test against in my example since it's just a demonstration i'm just going to go with sandcat HTTPS. when i click on one of the platforms i'm then shown a script that i can run on this particular platform and it'll essentially connect back to my virtual machine i would recommend you go into the documentation to understand all the differences between them but if you really want to just get started, what you can do is ensure that the app contact um, IP address is correct. It's pointing back to your own machine. You can customize the implant name here, if you will. So this implant name is essentially what the process is going to run as in the victim machine. So simulating that particular name that you enter in here. So in this particular example, by default, it's coming in as Splunk D or Splunk agent so a scene log collector for example and there are different extensions or plugins that you could load into this uh, particular script if you wanted so in my example i could just copy and paste this particular one here and i could just send this to my victim now the way i'm going to deliver this to my victim is going to be through a 
PowerShell script naturally. So I've just come in here, I deployed an agent, I modified the IP address to this device's local IP address naturally. Um, it modified then the script here. I just copy it into a text file, save this, save this as PS1 extension and zipped it. So I'm gonna send this to my victim via a means. So the way they started to deliver this was through a zip file attached to an email. So this is my sender, my compromised user sending a email to my risk user who is going to click and download this attachment and going to run this script on their machine. This is then gonna kick off the agent on the command and control. Let's do this. I'm then prompted for Windows Firewall, which is a good sign. It means that it hasn't been stopped um, by the protection because I overrode my policy. Of course, this is a administrator's policy. I could have blocked my user from doing that as to keep them safer so, so as not to allow them to run these scripts. But then when I jump into my command and control, you can see here that then this agent is alive. It's running, it's elevated, so everything is working well from my command and control perspective. So I now have a victim who has run my script, it's running my agent, and from where now I can start performing adversary um, activities and automated operations into this machine. I could go into particular abilities and tr run these abilities and run each of these abilities and these are different tech techniques as you can see here assigned uh, MITRE ATT&CK framework numbers here. When I finalize tweaking these abilities, I can come into adversaries or I could come into adversaries and perhaps I don't want to go through each individual ability. I actually just want to go through the adversaries list that MITRE has uh, created the profile for and I have a number of different adversaries here with all the um, knowledge base that's, that comes from discovery related um, uh, techniques, for example. I could click in here, I'm gonna see all the different techniques that are available as part of this particular um, domain in MITRE ATT&CK. And then I can try and perform each of these different techniques if I wanted to. You could even import your own adversary from a local file that you generated from the MITRE uh, ATT&CK um, framework itself. I myself, I had downloaded one called Advanced Thief. That's a YAML file. Uh, I could import this adversary. It preloads all the techniques that I loaded into this particular profile. Lastly, under operations, you can actually just create an operation yourself. What is an operation? An operation is something that you are tweaking as you go. Um, so for example, what you can do here is create your own operation, like I said, um, choosing your whatever adversary you want to test for. So perhaps you want to test against discovery, and then you can choose how you want this to perform obfuscations, and how do you want to run it, whether you want to run it it's to run autonomously or whether you want it to require manual approval. For example, um, let's do it autonomously so that we can have a look. And then it's gonna tell you how you wanna run it immediately or pause on start, right? So there are a few things that you, settings that you can change here from this operation. So let's automate it all. Let's do it autonomously, run, auto run automatically or immediately. And let's click on start and see it happening. There we go. As I click start, it started performing the first tactic, identifying active user. So it's running this as I'm talking, as I'm speaking. Now it's succeeded, as you can see here. It's stating success. It's telling me the um, process user ID. Uh, I can see the link output. So if I click here, I'm going to see what is the output. So this is the user that is running on that machine. Uh, now it's trying to collect more, identifying local users. And after a few seconds, it's completed it. it. Took 50 seconds roughly. Again, you can click on view output and you understand if there are more users in that machine or local, mach local users rather. 
you can also click on link command so that you understand what's actually trying to do in that machine. So when you see click on view command, you can see the obfuscated bit on base 64, like I've chosen um, what's sent to that machine and then what's in plain text, right? Now it's trying to find user processes. So it's listing out all user processes. So it succeeded in doing so. Now it's viewing administrator shares. Now it succeeded. Now it's trying to discover a domain controller. Now this machine is not running on that uh, Active Directory that I had on my representation notes. So it's not going to find anything in here. There we go, it failed as expected. There's nothing to show, no such domain. Yep. Let's see if it's able to discover antivirus programs. It succeeded. Let's have a look at the output. It's listing out Windows Defender, that is correct. It's listing out the installation path. Um, reports reporting to. Now it's Listed out the permission groups. That's trying to identify firewalls. It succeeded. There you go. So right there and then you've seen that it we ran a discovery operations. We found out the domain, the active user, the local uh, users, uh, the, the antivirus program running in it, the firewall, the permission groups that this uh, device has access to. And from here, I could just start a new operations if I wanted to, or I could continue and manually send commands to that machine uh, by just clicking on manual command, entering the command that I want to, running on CMD, as you can see here, or PowerShell or I could click on potential link. Now potential link leverages the MITRE attack framework and allows me as administrator to actually do that myself. So if I wanted to come in here, execute a PowerShell command um, that is from MITRE attack, and I'm actually trying to perform a um, credential access, for example, into that machine. So if, if I want to try and find out credentials registry, uh, assigned to this particular uh, technique here within MITRE attack. I could just uh, essentially put in here, depending on the command that there might, there might be requirements that you need to enter. So then, of course, part of an operations, you would have those requirements uh, performed previously. But if you're doing that manually, then you have to just ensure that you are providing the information needed here, right? So just be aware of that. So let me try and just add this potential command here. As you can see, it succeeded it. You know, if I click on view output, we can understand what's being done for that particular password from a register perspective. So then much like I did now, you could do the same, right? So you could look for any particular MITRE attack technique and try and attempt to run them here or create your own operation with your own steps, provided you have a, a gap provided to you, an analysis gap provided to you that where you may need to just double check how your controls are actually protecting you against those particular gaps, right? And then you can implement changes, test again, implement changes, test again, and so on and so forth. And the never ending cycle of improvement continues that way. Now, hopefully this has been interesting for you from that perspective. And I haven't even scratched the surface here on Kodera, but if you're interested in a particular segment of the platform that I didn't touch on, it's by all means, link up, I'll link up the Caldera um, open source tools website and you can find out more. Let me know if you found this in, uh, interesting and informative. And if you did, please like and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you.